Hey everyone, welcome back to this week's vlog. Today I have got a treat for you because I'm taking you back to something I filmed nearly two years ago when we finished off recording Vulnerability. This is an interview with Ian Hutchison who helped produce and mix the whole project. He's a fantastic engineer, he's a good friend and um, he did a brilliant job making the album what it is. And I interview him and ask him a few questions about the whole process. So enjoy, watch and let me know what you think. Hey everyone, we are back again with Ian Hutchison who produced this recording. Um, we've had such a great time here in Glasgow. Um, I've kind of been blown away by the whole process, mm. I must say. It's every day you come in and you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. By the end of the, the day, most days we've said, that was a really good day. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it must be strange for you, um, not having met me before, mm -hmm. having a few conversations on the phone. Sure. Day one, we come, I come into the studio and you're pretty much right, let's get going. Yeah. Tell me about what it's like what it's been like for you working with yeah. me, honestly. Yep. Um, <laughs> certainly those first few days of pre-production yeah. and how you approach that. Well, I would say it always takes you a wee while to kind of warm into exactly what you're doing together when you start working with a new artist. And so the pre-production days were really about me trying to get inside your head, I suppose. <laughs> um, so that's why I, that's why I asked for a reference list, you know, a list of a list of other tracks by other bands that you like. That's part of the process of getting into your head, and um, that's why I ask for demos so that I can hear where you're starting from. Um, and I guess the the pre-production days were about trying to unlock the key to each song. You know, mm. what is it that's going to make this song really work? And um, what is it about it that works already on your demo? And um, you know, what the aspects that I immediately heard and go, okay, yeah, that's great. We want to go with that. Mm. What are the other things that maybe weren't quite working on the demos and you know, some of the stuff we looked at is what keys to do the songs in. Yeah. Um, to find the, the, the right range in your voice. And, and I'm glad we had that time before we started recording instruments to kind of go, you know, try it up one, try it down one, just to yeah. see kind of where it's going to sit best, where it's going to have the most impact, but also work well for your voice. Yeah. Um, and I, it's, it's kind of a trial and error. There's a sense of we we had a bit of a, a direction in mind, having heard your reference list and yeah. talked about kind of what sort of music you wanted to make. There was a direction in mind, but once the tracks start to evolve, they also kind of have a life of their own. Mm. And so you're you're walking a very fine balance of trying to make the album we plan to make, but also just following your nose a little bit and following mm. the tracks and letting them breathe and letting them become ultimately what they want to become. Mm. Um, and kind of not hindering that, even if it means they surprise us slightly, which I yeah. think has happened on a few occasions on the definitely, album. Definitely, so. definitely. Um, and so we've had the, the four days of pre-production. Uh -huh. We come in. That following a few sure. weeks, couple of weeks later, drums straight yep. away for three days. Yep. Um, and and we're working with a, a friend of mine, Fermi, who, sure. who did a great job on the recording. Fantastic. Um, how was that for you, like <laughs> recording drums and then bass soon after? It was great. So I, I would often start a project with drums pretty much on day one, but actually, I think because I'd never met you before mm. and you know we were just starting to work together, to have the four days of pre-production was really important because by the time we hit the drums. Um, we actually had a fairly clear vision for the songs, sure. you know, and um, so that was that was a brilliant process because Fermi really brought a lot of energy to the project, brought a lot of um, ideas and vision as well, mm -hmm. um, and and same with Henry and bass. It was that was another fantastic process, just kind of watching the songs evolve. And by the end of that week, we only had drums and bass plus guides, but yeah. actually there was a real sense of kind of clear direction, clear vision for each of the songs and where they were going. And they had the real kind of energy of a live performance on them as well. Yeah, it was amazing. It was almost like these mm. songs feel like halfway there. Sure, sure. And we haven't even got any guitars yeah. or keys or anything. Yeah. Um, so you said to me at the mm -hmm. beginning of the project, it'd be really good if you play guitar. Yeah. Uh, me play yeah. guitar a lot. Yeah. I wouldn't really call myself um, as a great guitarist. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a real challenge personally sure. for me to actually say, okay, I'm going to step up yeah, yeah. to the mark and, and try and do it. How did you bring out the best in me? <laughs> and um, what were some of the challenges with that? So, I guess, um, well, the, the challenges were more about us. It's the same as what I said about kind of keys when we talked about it before. Um, it's about finding the, the right sound and the right thing to fit mm. with the tracks. So, so that's that was all part of the process of unlocking the tracks, I suppose, and finding, you know, often you put down one part, and it was particularly in guitars where this happened, and all of a sudden, the, the song would take off and yeah. be like, oh, okay, I see where we're going, and then the ideas would start flowing. Yeah. So um, 
that the biggest challenge, I guess, was kind of you know the two heads together and trying to find the parts, find the yeah. sounds, and um, you know bringing out the best in an artist as a producer is all about making them feel comfortable, making sure you feel connected to the project because ultimately it's your project. Yeah. I think you know a mistake that producers can make is to try and sort of imprint their own vision on everything that they do. Right. And um, whereas my goal really is to fully realise your vision and exceed your expectations on yeah. that rather than say well this is my idea for how your album so that you know when you're sitting there playing you feel like you're playing your stuff rather than mm. I'm doing this thing that you asked me to do on this song that doesn't feel like mine anymore you know? yeah. so when you have that kind of gut connection to it then you will naturally play well and play with excitement and, yeah. and you know I, I would say that you know the process of recording the guitars as well I guess just stronger and stronger as we went on you know the more we were getting the ideas together the more we were working yeah. out how each other worked and the more you were playing it was just you know there was some great stuff happening so. there was a my favorite moment was definitely a song called born to be brave oh yeah um i think it was the, the monday of a, of a start of a week <laughs> and um we knew we needed to nail the song yeah and it was just it was like everything came together really super yeah, quickly sure, um, sure and that was a real privilege for me yeah um, absolutely playing on that part i really loved it so thanks for pushing me on that <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Um, we um, we also had uh, aside from the guest kind mm -hmm. of musicians, we played quite a lot on on sure. this project. Um, how do you balance that between being an artist, a, a performer, a session musician mm -hmm. on a project that you're also recording? How does that work for you in your head? Can you is that an easy balance? Yeah, I guess so. I guess it's just it's it's a natural extension of your kind of creative mind. Mm. Really, it's like. You know, when when you're in, ultimately the whole studio is an instrument, is the way I see it. Wow. You know, and so it's like whatever we're using to get to to realise the idea that we have in our head yeah. is 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 great. So like you have an idea and you think, okay, I can do some, you know, some processing, use some plugins, whatever yeah. to to achieve a sound, then great. Or no, I have an idea and actually I need to go on the piano and I need to play these notes. Or you know, it's it it kind of doesn't really matter what the tool is. I just see playing and producing engineering as all part of the same thing mm. in the studio because it's just all about realising, you know, getting getting the sound that's in your head out from the speakers. Mm. Mm. So. Amazing. Um, what were your favourite moments? Have you got any favourite moments of the recording? <laughs> I mean, uh, there's some good bits, there's yeah. maybe some <laughs> and a, a challenging moment as well. Well, I don't know if there's really been any bad moments. I think probably the hardest part of the process was the pre-production because we were just getting going and you, you're starting with nothing. You've got these yeah. embryonic acoustic demos which are now a million miles from where the songs have become. Yeah. And um, so it, it's it's <laughs> having it's being able to have the vision and it was easier for you because you'd lived with the songs and you knew where they were going and I was kind of coming into that process and trying to get to know you yeah. and get to know what sort of music makes you tick and all that kind of thing as well as trying to realise the best of these songs, you know, so that was the most challenging part. In terms of the highlights, I mean, it's, it's all been great, we have had so much fun. Um, working with, with, with Fermi and Henry was brilliant in terms of, as he said, after we only had drums and bass, mm. um, we were already really kind of cooking and yeah. um, I would say yeah, some of that guitar tracking actually was a real highlight for me as well mm. when, when things really clicked like Born to be Brave as you mentioned and mm. I remember the voice as well. Yeah, as well. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were having a lot of fun just going for that but, but there were these moments where all of a sudden the tracks got really elevated um, and I remember actually on recording, um, was it, it was, I think it was, well there was two of the sort of more gentle tracks, Father Father and Mesmerise. Mm. I think Father Father was one of the ones where we just were really aware of God's presence yeah. just during guitar tracking and, yeah. and I was just, I was loving it, I was just sitting there and listening and mm. helping to produce but in a fairly backseat role and just letting it flow and mm. um, Mesmerised as well, I remember there was a guitar part that took off that and then we picked mm. that up on the piano and it's when the ideas start to flow like that, yeah. it's really exciting and one thing leads to another and all of a sudden you're You've got this thing that you never would have imagined having mm. at the start. I mm. and, and and picking up on that mm -hmm. God's presence moment. Yep. We've, you know, this is a worship album. Um, maybe not necessarily a congregational album. Sure. But I think some songs can be used in that setting. Um, as a Christian, mm -hmm. um, as a producer, who doesn't normally work on worship projects. Yep. Um, you've found that quite re a refreshing process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but how do you capture those moments where you, you sense like 
think God's really honest. This is mm-hmm. this is a moment that it's not it's not just a song anymore. It's sure. carrying something of the presence of God. How do you capture that? Yeah. So in the past, I used to think you would have to make a live recording to capture that you know the atmosphere of God's presence yeah. on a recording. But actually, I think that it's about it's about being in that place, really. You know, having having an open heart all the way through the process. Mm. You know, and it's it's when it's it's when you're playing something and you begin to sense God's presence on it. You know, there's there's, there's real fruit in this idea, mm. and it's just about you know if every part is recorded in His presence mm. and in the flow of His creativity, then the the, the whole the sum of it ends up being something that carries that. Mm. So. And with with one thing that I've really mm. found really special for me has been we we try and spend every morning before we start the project just sure. worshiping together and that's sure. for me has been that, yeah. incredible because we've just to start the day and set mm-hmm. it aside as God yeah. this is yours absolutely has been a really really special time for me and I think it's made it easier for us to work together as well absolutely that's what I was going to say to be honest mm. is that that's you know you, you kind of develop a, a friendship a relationship with someone as a result of worshiping together yeah as a result of going on a joint mission together yeah. I suppose and, and that's been a huge part of that just kind of sharing that time definitely and there have been long days so mm. I mean for me and I know you've said this as well it's been refreshing yeah just having that that time together sure with, away from like thinking about we've got to crack yeah. on with this yeah. yeah absolutely so um final question okay um the last few days we've been mixing mm-hmm. um we're now four or five songs into that mix five, five done five yeah. done five six done. to go um, <laughs> <laughs> so um What's your approach to mixing versus pro- producing slash recording sure. engineering? Sure. Okay, so when we're capturing the sounds, I want to get them sounding as good as possible straight away. I don't like to leave everything till the mix. So, so I've been kind of doing compression and equalization mm. to kind of mold the sounds on the way in. Yeah. You know, um, and quite unashamedly pushing things in one direction or another so that they every piece of the jigsaw fits together. So come mix time. You know, the the idea is I should be able to push up all the faders and it immediately sounds good. Mm. It sounds exciting and it's got, you know, there's not things kind of interfering with each other because we've dealt with that in the arrangement and moulding each of the sounds. So, so then it's really just about kind of trying to trying to gel the whole energy of the of the recording together into one homogenous thing, I yeah. suppose, per track. Yeah. You know, so so there's a lot of different kind of techniques and tricks we can use in mixing. I mean, it's my favorite part of the process right. because it's when you when you really fully realize the vision of each song yeah. you know uh, before that when you're listening back you're always hearing the ultimate potential of where the mix could go yeah but when you do that that's it's also the most challenging part because it's like <laughs> if you if you don't quite get there it's very frustrating so you've got to really push yourself and push yourself until until the mix is really doing what you want it to do yeah. so. thank you so much all right thanks for the interview yeah, thanks thank for you. playing recording and making this thing so amazing it's an for absolute me. pleasure thank you I hope you found that really interesting. I certainly did, looking back over it again, having not watched it for maybe two years. And um, if you like it, please do check the like button, hit subscribe because we're trying to grow this channel and I look forward to sharing more with you next week. Plus, don't forget Patreon. If you want to get involved with Patreon, it's a small way of supporting what I do musically each month. Um, I'd love you to join us there. Anyway, see you next week.